As people across the country celebrated the close of 2011, President Obama signed the controversial National Defense Authorization Act into law. Despite concerns from civil liberties groups about provisions on military detention, the suspension of due process, and the Guantanamo Bay prison, in a statement released on New Year's Eve, President Obama described his serious reservations to some sections of the bill and promised to apply the law in a way that respects the Constitution. FSRN's Alice Olstein reports from. Washington. On Saturday, President Obama released a signing statement explaining which sections of the National Defense Authorization Act are legally objectionable and how the White House will work around them. The questionable provisions in the 500-plus page bill include a ban on funding for the transfer of detainees from Guantanamo, the indefinite detention of suspected foreign terrorists, and the authorization of military detention for U.S. citizens. That same day, the president released a video of his New Year's address. There's no doubt that 2012 will bring even more change, and as we head into the new year, I'm hopeful that we have what it takes to face that change and come out even stronger. Although he discussed the payroll tax cut debate and his American Jobs Act, the president's speech included no mention of the defense bill, which the White House had previously threatened to veto as it made its way through Congress. The president withdrew that threat after language was added, allowing him to waive mandatory military detention. Seeking to reassure his critics amidst an outcry from major civil liberties groups, President Obama wrote, "My administration will not authorize the indefinite military detention without trial of American citizens." However, many of the provisions in this bill will be on the books indefinitely, and another administration may interpret them differently. God knows who will be the next president of the United States. They may not take、uh, the same cautious. That's Muhammad Salim Akhtar, director of the American Muslim Task Force on Civil Rights. Akhtar says this new law may further the government's racial profiling, selective enforcement, and entrapment practices that already hurt the U.S. Muslim population. Those laws which have been、uh, made, they have been selectively applied to the Muslim community, which has further fueled the Islamophobia. It's the job of the government to guide the citizens to do and say the right thing. It's not the job of the government to trick the citizens to do and say the wrong thing, and then you nab them. We have been victim. This law will have a further negative impact and will be applied to the Muslim community. In his signing statement, President Obama promised to treat as non-binding any provision of the bill that conflicts with his authority to uphold the Constitution or violates the separation of powers. But Shayna Cotadal from the Center for Constitutional Rights says the bill gives the executive branch unprecedented power, expanding on the Authorization for Use of Military Force Act signed by President Bush in 2001. Now you might wonder, with Osama bin Laden dead now and the war on terror, you know, potentially sort of reaching an end, why Congress would see fit to expand it? The bill also extends indefinitely another emblem of the post-9/11 years: the U.S. detention camp at Guantanamo Bay. Though the president promised to work around any efforts to prevent the closure of the base, Cotadal says Congress's transfer ban has so far been effective. More than half the people at Gitmo are people that the the president wants to let go, but can't because Congress has put this roadblock in his his way. And actually, in the 11 months since this roadblock has has been in place, there hasn't been a single person transferred out of Guantanamo. And that's actually the longest stretch of time in the nearly 10 year history of the prison、uh, without having anyone sent home. Next week, activists from across the country will gather in Washington D.C. to protest the continued detention of more than 170 men at the naval base at Guantanamo. And Akhtar says he and other civil rights activists plan to challenge the National Defense Authorization Act as unconstitutional in court. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Washington.